This is January 5th, 2011. I'm Courtney Angle, and you're watching Streamlining Social Media, Episode 11. First up in the news today, we have a new application for the iPhone called Near. Near is an interesting app that will actually function kind of like Foursquare or the other check-in services, but is limited to those that you specify specifically. So check inside of iTunes for this app. It's N-E-E-R, and it's... Uh, going to basically let you show others that you want to meet up for dinner or food or whatever, but it's not meant to be public or to connect in with Facebook and other things, just for your actual close nearby friends. Next up, we have the first ever proposal happening inside of Groupon. If you want to also take part in this proposal, you could actually go and buy the proposal as well. You too can be engaged to Greg if you go to groupon.com slash deals slash Greg dash getting dash engaged. Greg surprised Dana for a mere one dollar. She could be engaged to Greg and set to be married. The fine print is that it's non-transferable and though you save an estimated $999,998, the price of his love thus being almost, almost one million dollars, you can get engaged to Greg yourself if you buy it for one dollar. Check it out. Interesting way that Groupon's being used in the Cincinnati region. Next up tomorrow, we are expecting the set launch of the Apple App Store or the Mac App Store. It is supposed to be taking place at noon Eastern time, which is very interesting as it will interfere or happen during the same time as the start of CES. Uh, so that's kind of an interesting plot. We have Facebook Obsession, the documentary, airing on CNBC soon. You can either check it out on Facebook's website, their fan page for CNBC, or simply going to the facebookobsession.com or facebookobsession.cnbc.com. Let's take a look at the preview video. This movie is about friendship and betrayal and greed and, and, and money and power. Brenda, right here, please. Frenzied excitement at the New York debut of the much-anticipated The Social Network, a movie touted as capturing the moment at which Facebook was invented, the most revolutionary social phenomenon of the new century. All this talk about Facebook. The well-oiled Hollywood promotion machine was out in full force. It was a big theme of ambition. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. A kind of American success story. He was really onto something because you know 500 million other people use it. It's a story of sex and drugs with a little rock and roll. It's not the story at, of what happened when we founded Facebook. Chris Hughes first met Mark Zuckerberg their freshman year at Harvard in 2002. He was a bit of a recluse, spending a lot of his time coding, but the faster you got to know him, the easier you got to understand that he was actually quite interested in the way people were uh, interacting both at school and, and in general. By the fall of 2003, Hughes, Zuckerberg, and Dustin Moskovitz were roommates living in the dorm where Facebook's predecessor was created. Something called Face Mash, where Mark was able to collect all of the Harvard photographs in the Facebooks of all of these undergraduate houses, put them in a single database, and then in a typically mature uh, way, put one person by another and you could decide which was the more attractive. It would be the first, but certainly not the last time, Zuckerberg's controversial methods would lead to trouble. Accused of hacking into Harvard's computer network to access the photos, he faced several university charges, including breach of security and privacy violations. The charges were eventually dropped, and a few months later, on February 12, 2004, the Facebook was born. We figured that if we can make a site that would help people communicate with their friends, their real friends, more easily, then this could be a great service for people. It was an instant hit, but not everyone was cheering its growing success. Very, very quickly he opened up to other schools as we told them in our conversations to do. It was such a shock and it just an utter betrayal. Then Harvard seniors Divya Narendra, Tyler and Cameron Winklevoss watched the Facebook craze with horrified disbelief. They accused Zuckerberg of stealing their social network idea by pretending to work on their site, the Harvard Connection. Our initial meeting was in the dining hall of Kirkland House. We gave him the logins to our servers. 
which had all of our existing source code, the Harvard Connection site that was built to that point. We shared our ideas. We had a lot of email discourse back and forth, and in total about 52 email exchanges and three meetings in person. We were all excited, and we could tell he was too. And then something changed along the way. It was sort of a, just a string of... Experience. If you want to find out more about the Facebook obsession, take a look at CNBC's documentary starting to air tomorrow night. Also in the news, we have the browser trends as reported by CNN's website. In the U.S., we have Firefox and Chrome on the rise. And for the first time in existence, Internet Explorer, good old IE, is starting to decline. It is less than 50% at this time. And as you can see, Chrome is definitely on the rise, followed shortly thereafter by Firefox. Chrome and Safari are essentially one and the same thing, so you can pretty much guess that the way your browser looks in one window, things will appear the same in the other. Firefox is built on different code than Safari and Chrome. That said, um, just make sure that your websites display properly in both browsers. I'm Courtney Engel. This is Streamlining Social Media, Episode 11. See you again tomorrow.